Pablo, there are a number of different things that I want to talk to you about, but one of them is the back uh, page of the New York Post, Joel Embiid and everything happening in New York, because uh, Miami fans have something to be happy about in the next uh, couple of rounds. Either Boston or New York is guaranteed to lose. <laughs> is Pablo a Sixers fan or a Knicks fan today? I don't know. Let's okay. see where we are with all of this, Pablo. Uh, take us through this back page cover. Yeah, so uh, Joel Embiid, if you're not familiar, as we wait for the back page to pop up here, Joel Embiid, uh, his body feels like Greg's face looks. So he's not he's not well right now, okay? Um, but the most hated man in New York is the, uh, is the big 200-point font on the back page of the Post. Knicks fans set to tell Embiid how they really feel. Um, and at this point, it just feels like bullying. I'll, I'll, I've spent the weekend reflecting on how I've been handling this story, and I have criticism for Embiid in a way that makes me feel like a guy who turned heel. That's what Mina told us, uh, Dan, Dan and me, on our, on our group chat. Um, what an incredible heel turn for Pablo to start killing Joel Embiid and get all these Sixers fans mad at him. And at this point, when I say to you, okay, that Joel Embiid had one point in the fourth quarter of this last game, that he had zero rebounds in the fourth quarter of the previous game, that in the first two games he had zero rebounds, um, I believe in the second half, um, or whatever it is. Lots of zeros when it comes to that guy. Um, he had one point in the fourth quarter. Um, so, look, to me, it's just stating the obvious. And the fact that he is the most hated man in New York feels like this city's appreciation for a punching bag, for a pinata. It feels like it's pinata season on Joel Embiid. Pablo, so I this feel is for this, him, but Pablo, come on. look, this is what is so great, fascinating, humanizing about all the storytelling that is in sports that's so wonderful. New York Stugatz is about to get so obnoxious. Yes. So obnoxious. Yep. And in comes the guy uniquely qualified in body type and character to handle to, no not to handle this just to be a troll and after three years of my body works perfect and look here chop i'm bigger than everyone chop and all he is is a troll and he's welcoming the fight but now he's got bell's palsy stugatz his face is drooping his he can't blink his left eye he should be wearing a phantom mask i Joel thought you were talking about taylor we're going to go to Taylor. He's on a train. He's almost <laughs> arrived at Madison Square Garden. But Insane what's about to understand. fall on Embiid's head, Pablo? This is the place where people are made into either heroes or crushed under it because I would not want to be him headed into that. Yes, the power, the superpower of New York, the real thing New York City can sell is that it has the spotlight that actually melts people. It's a thing. That building specifically, more than Yankee Stadium even, that building is a spotlight. You shine on people, and you see whether you can actually destroy them. And Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter, the reason I say the fourth quarter is because it is a proxy for pressure. And pressure has never felt more palpable than in the garden when it's sold out and the Knicks are onto something. No, and they're onto and, it. No, and, and... They just trampled your building so that after the game, you're saying you're pissed off because New York, hey, wasn't Philadelphia sports town. Stugatz, I would not want to be Joel Embiid. My body doesn't work right. The stress is in my face. It doesn't allow my left eye to blink. New York is coming for me, and I don't know what to do about their little guy. And then they start offensive rebounding, and I can't get Hartenstein off my back. Like, I wouldn't want to be him tonight, and these are the nights. Hey, Joel, MVP, can you put up 50 even though your body doesn't work? I mean, I understand what you're saying, but Joel Embiid's going to be fine either way. I'm just saying it would scare me is all I'm saying. I understand, but Joel Embiid lives in this place where if he wins, great. We'll celebrate Stugatz, him tomorrow. And if he loses, no one's going to blame Joel Embiid is what I'm because saying. he'll blame everyone Stugatz, else. He cares very much. He's playing the way that he is because his body is broken. Yep. No human being with their body in this condition would want this set of circumstances falling on their head. It depends you, on the athlete. You can be Some athletes welcome this. Uh, okay, Michael, but, welcome but not, this. Not if your body doesn't work right, Stugatz. You not, remember the flu game? Not if the Bell's palsy is in your face. It's a stress disease. I understand. But the great athletes, they look forward to tonight, to shutting up that crowd. Say whatever you want. I'm going to shut you up. We're going I, back to Philly know, for a game I, six. And I am telling you, as we sit here today, I'm not as brave or strong as the great athletes. I would fall apart under these conditions. Okay. 
what I'm saying is that I've watched Joel Embiid now for almost a decade, and I have not seen. And this is the criticism I have of him: he has not risen to those moments. I got people really mad at me because I said he needed to step up in a big game, and of course he scored. He's he has the greatest postseason resume this postseason of his entire career. He scored 50 the other night. And that is still true alongside the fact that at the end of a game, it doesn't look like he is seizing the moment. And I get that this makes me sound like a sport. Every Philadelphia uh, sports fan, I suppose, which I count myself as in the you know last decade um, for the Sixers, we turn into sports radio callers because by the end of it, you're just yelling at your television and saying to somebody, be better. And yet with Joel Embiid, I do think that he has not shown a comfort under pressure. And when you're the guy who's the troll, when you're the guy who is so, who is so fun because you look like you don't give up, the fact that you look like you're giving every single F, sorry, Roy, that's the problem now. Is that, oh, right, you're the opposite of your brand now. You look scared and broken. And the latter, I understand physically. The former is what makes me want to call into a radio station. It's fascinating, just storyline from the idea that if you're watching this the way Pablo is, from the start of the process, this is 15 years of Northeast basketball. Mm -hmm. New York hasn't mattered for 15 years. Philadelphia has been building, and all they have to show for losing on purpose and embarrassing themselves is this broken thing that now falls under the light of the magnifying glass when the sun is burning ants. It's like, you're what's left of this. Go save it in Madison Square Garden under impossible conditions. Except you're the best player on the floor. You're the MVP. Yes, Yes. You're this is where these stories get made. Stu you're guys. calling these impossible conditions. He has a great number two in Maxi. The team is good. They made a mistake with Jimmy Butler over. To I'm talking about his body, Stu guys. I, I get Dan. I'm, I'm, I get the body part. But you Joel, don't, though, is what I'm saying. You don't. He's still playing at a very high but, level, even while broken. I, I know, but you're asking him to play at a higher level. Yep. Flu game. Okay. It's like watching a seven foot Greg Cody play center. That's what Joel Embiid has been like all year. Thank you. I don't know if that's a compliment. It is.